Planet Pens turns HDP plastics that might otherwise end up in our waterways or landfill into beautiful, practical pens. We're part of a very new high school on Northside. Uh, we started year seven last year and we're adding a grade per year. Chris is in year eight and I'm in year seven this year. In total, we have 16 students. So, how did Planet Pens begin? Well, we have students from all around Sydney and one of our students comes from the northern beaches and he's lucky enough to go surfing every day. Um, he came to school one morning last year and started talking about all the plastics he sees in the ocean and on the beaches. This started a big conversation about the environment and how bad a problem plastic was becoming. As a class, we started researching and making infographs on the issue. Now, here are the scary statistics. There will be more plastic in our oceans than fish by 2050. We throw out enough plastic every year that it could encompass the planet four times. And less than 9% of all plastic gets recycled. Now that we knew more about the problem, we wanted to take action. We started to research possible solutions and ways to reduce, reuse and recycle plastics. On YouTube, we found a great team of brothers called Brothers Make. Um, they're Brett, Matt and Johnny, who, and they're passionate about making, content creating and helping to reduce global plastic pollution. They filmed some great tutorials on how to melt HDP plastic and turn the waste into practical things like combs, necklaces, cutting boards, etc. You name it, and they make it. Um, they, and it's only using the plastics that, other, that would otherwise go into landfill or pollute waterways. And they did it in such a fun and clear way. We were hooked. So, and we thought, if they can do it, so can we. So our journey began. We put out flyers around the school community and handed out mesh bags that people could use instead of plastic bags in the supermarket. We made posters and decorated bins so that we could collect the HDP plastic, such as shampoo bottles, milk bottle lids, drink containers. We had to come up with a logo and company name as well. We started the big job of sorting, cleaning, and cutting plastic that we collected. Trust me, washing, washing weak old milk bottles is not fun. Um, but it was all part of the process. Uh, we bought sandwich presses and heat-proof gloves and started melting the plastic into blocks. We sourced pen kits and learned how to use a lathe. It was a very slow process, but we were really excited about to start this microeconomy and start dealing with the problem of plastic pollution. We went back to the school community and surveyed their use of plastics, what colours they would prefer in the pens, and how we should package them. Before we knew it, a lot of our learning and discussions were around plastics, the environment, and making sustainable choices. We had great help from the community. We started aquaponics systems inside and outside the classroom. We learned about circular economies and green business models from CEOs from Farm Wall and Harris Farm. Energize came in and worked with us um, with solar panels. We had an environmental evening for our school families and the wider community. Uh, we started a return and earn station and did student education events. We helped bush regeneration through Karingai Council and we learned a lot about making better choices for the environment. Um, we took on roles within the company, such as quality control manager, bookkeeper, events coordinator, and inventory manager. We had to make big decisions about how we wanted our business to run. We worked regularly through school, after school, and even in the holidays to build Planet Pens. We contacted our local coffee shop, Jack & Co, and they started sa saving their milk bottle lids for us. It's Chris's job to visit there and collect the lids each week. And I'll pass you over to him. Yeah, the process took us over a year to perfect, but we didn't give up. So we started by melting the plastic in a sandwich press. It was hot work and it was really slow. So um, once the plastic was melted, we just pushed it in the molds that we made using like wood scraps. And uh, it just cooled and like t uh, hardened into blocks that we called blanks. Uh, we had to cut them, drill them, put them on a lathe and shape them next. Uh, we then sourced pen kits, uh, assembled them, polished them and packaged them. We wanted to use recycled materials and keep the packaging to a minimum. So we used recycled cardboard and bought a heap of jeans from second-hand shops to sew pouches for them. It's still something that we're working on though. Every pen is handmade turned and, and unique. We think they're pretty good, but things didn't go smoothly. It took such a long time for the pens to melt and we kept getting air bubbles. Uh, I don't know how many pens we put on the lathe and they would split as we hit an air bubble. We create 20 pens and only have three work. So we had to find a better way, of course. Uh, then we shift shifted to silicon moulds and melted the plastic at very low temperatures in the oven. 
HDP plastic gives off little to no fumes, so this worked much better. Now our success rate was much, much better. Only problem was that we were using a lot of electricity with the plastic taking four to five hours to melt. So we had to find a more effective process. That solution came with help from Sally Erickson and the Karingai Council when we won an environment levy grant. What used to take, uh, uh, we got support from NGS Super and so we could buy a shredder so we didn't need to cut the plastic bottles by hand and an extruder to efficiently melt the plastic. We used a great company called Precious Plastics in Melbourne for our machinery. What used to take us weeks we can now make in a day and every pen is strong and beautiful. We started getting creative with our colour range. Here are some we made in honour of the Barbie movie. We are lucky enough to win the Young Leaders category for New South Wales Keep Australia Beautiful Awards. It took a lot of courage for Jason Armand to speak in front of the room full of adults in suits. Um, but they care a lot about Planet Pens and spreading the message about recycling plastic. We felt very honoured. As our confidence grew, so did our business. Uh, my year, year seven, started to help as well. In less than two years, we have collected plastic donations from over 100 families. We have washed and sorted over 10,000 pieces of plastic that would have just been in landfill or polluting our waterways. We've partnered with local coffee shops and reached out to other local businesses. We've held community environmental events. We have spent more than 400 hours on Planet Pens, and we've learned a lot about ourselves. We now have an order of over 150 pens, and we'll be speaking at the NGS National Conference, and we are currently writing and illustrating a children's book on the issue of plastic pollution and what every one of us can do to help. We've had to learn a lot about business, from production to profit and loss to advertising, and we've had to come up with some, with some big decisions and to work together to reach consensus. We had to share our ideas about what we should do with our profits, and we came to an agreement. Some of our business meetings have been long. <laughs> um, we agreed that 50% of everything that we make, the blue, um, should go back into our business, 25% should go to classroom supplies and events, and the other 25% should go to environmental charities like Planet Ark, who care for endangered and, and native animals and help reduce human impact on the environment. Well, what's next? Thanks to Karinga Council for a grant, we are about to launch our new environment enterprise, Planet Paper. It will sit along Sorry, Planet Pens really well, because it's pens and paper, yeah. Okay. Um, we'll be making a range of stationary products using recycled paper gathered from the school, community, and embedded with native seeds. That way, people can use the products and bury, bury them from a fresh start and new growth. We've purchased frames and decals, which is paper making equipment, and we have raised garden beds and can't wait to uh, start when the term begins. Watch this space. So what can you do at home or at work? Just think of the three R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Say it with me. Reduce, reuse, recycle. It's so important. That's why you all know it. Um, not just with plastic, but with all of our resources. Say no to single-use plastics like pl plastic cutlery and straws. Come prepared. Bring your own reusable cutlery, your fabric and mesh bags, your water bottles. Recycle where possible and know your different recycling systems. Do a trash order. Where is most of your rubbish coming from? If it's throwaway coffee cups, maybe it's time to invest in a keep cup. Um, there are so many ways that you can make better choices, so be creative. None of this would have been possible without some help from some great people and organizations. Thank you to Jack and Co at Pimble, to the local community for your support, to NGS Super, to our Northside families, and to Sa Sally Erickson, and to Karingai Council. We are very grateful that a classroom conversation a year and a half ago about plastic in the ocean has given us so many opportunities and a way to take action. Thanks for listening.